the theme of this video is going to be about working with subforms. So when you look at an object, and I'm going to draw a um, sort of difficult to draw vase. A lot of my students have had trouble drawing this object before. And what you want is an overall structural element, but you don't want to go to that structure immediately. You want to look at the object and break it down into simple forms that you know that you can draw. And the four basic forms are, of course, the cylinder, um, box form, sphere, and cone. And if you can break it down into those and um, evolve those forms from there, you'll be in better shape. So here I'm starting with a cylinder. And if you don't know how to do a cylinder, back up, watch some other videos and um, on the channel and figure out how to just do a cylinder correctly. That largely depends on your ability to draw ellipses. When here, what I'm doing is um, setting out the angle of the cone and figuring out where that meets on the central axis. And then I'm cutting, a, cutting the cone off to kind of make the flare of the mouth of this face. And um, so what I'm, what I'm doing is kind of a subtractive method. Uh, so I'm taking away from the uh, initial cylinder up at the top. And here, what I'm doing is building a kind of evolved spherical form because this isn't a perfect sphere that, that um, they've used to create this face. It's a little bit off. So I've kind of rounded it a little bit. And what I like to do anytime that a form um, transitions uh, to a different rate of change over the form is draw an ellipse or a cross contour line around the form to indicate where that change happened. Um, then what I need to do is kind of approximate a, a larger cone form and it's going to run off the page but um, it's not a perfectly straight cone on on the center but um, we can adapt that to be a little bit more organic and then on the bottom uh, because the base is kind of conical I've pulled up another cone to uh, capture that and I've drawn through the form completely so that that um, is obvious what I'm doing and, and I can be sure that the points of the cone meet. Here what I'm going to do is go back through and, and refine everything, right? Um, your first step at any given uh, drawing isn't going to be correct. And as I refine here, I'm also adding more information about the way that these transitions happen. So I'm kind of using some uh, marks that go inside the form to uh, help that form evolve. And here I'm going to start evolving that um, that cone form and kind of rounding it out to become more accurate to the object that I see in front of me. And I'm kind of overlapping the large form of the base over the base uh, of it. So then I can get into the detail of the base, kind of round that out a little bit. Um, if I need to change the angle of the ellipse, I can do that like I've done here, and it doesn't matter sort of what the underdrawing looks like. Um, this vase is a dark blue sort of translucent vase. You can see through it. Um, and so if I want to start adding some value, um, I kind of need to find some anchor points that help me with the structure. One of the things about drawing transparent objects is that largely it depends on what's behind as to how the value works there. So you need to include a little bit of background information like I'm doing here. Like for instance in my case there's a dark phone behind there that creates a line right through it and that line uh, bends and distorts as it goes through the glass. Um, so what I can do is kind of work uh, on kind of how those background objects get distorted. And I don't even have to necessarily draw the background objects perfectly. As long as there's an indication of that um, it's going to come across in the way that, that I approach the form. So um, as I anchor down some darker values, I'm always thinking about what am I seeing through the object and how does the form of the object distort that. So 
Um, that's the trickiest thing about transparent objects and the main difference. And what I've done here is I've kind of introduced a middle value to the background so that I can um, sort of darken and lighten from that without having to fill in every bit of the canvas manually. Um, and you can do this with tone paper and black and white charcoal. It's a great uh, and quick drawing method. Um, if I bump up a couple of highlights, I kind of add a lot of dimension there. Um, in the space that I'm working in, there's a lot of, there's several different light sources. We've got a window and two fluorescent lights. So it kind of complicates the uh, drawing environment. Uh, but as long as I'm work thinking about structure and lighting and highlights, um, as well as the transparency of the object in the background behind it, um, it's going to work out okay. Um, and the more little details that you can get about the form, the better off this is going to come uh, come across in your final image. So the main thing to focus on here isn't necessarily the way the light works, but to understand the form and to understand the way that you use subforms to break it down into something that you can achieve easily through what you already know.